Hello and welcome to a tutorial for image J. Uh, this tutorial is going to be based on uh, determination of particle size um, in SEM images. <clears throat> so image J is a very uh, common uh, software. It has a lot of different applications. It's very good for processing images. I'm pretty sure you can just download it pretty uh, easily. Image J download and uh, yeah you should just be able to download it here and install it that shouldn't be too hard to do once you have it though you can load it up um, and we'll just go through the whole process here uh, let's see so I'm gonna say file open um, and I have a, a folder here of different SEM images let's go to sample one um, and let's say sample uh, S15 here. Well, actually, I'll do one that I haven't done yet because that'll be beneficial. So I'll be doing, let's do sample four, S45. The, this S4 means sample four, and then the five means different uh, zoom levels. And I think the fifth one has been the best. Actually, the Fifth one. That doesn't look like the best one. Let's get that again. Um, so let's see here. Sample four, three. This is what they look like. These are my SEM images. So we're just zooming in, zooming in zoom in in and I like this one to measure it you could do this one where it's at 10 microns but I like this one and you'll see why and let's look at these particle sizes and see if we can get the average diameter of these particles um, so what we're gonna want to do is click on image J and that was uh, that was this one right sample for six okay image J file open sample for six and now we have this file opened in image j um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to click here on the line you want to click right here it's going to be hard for you to see but you want to get it right on the end there click hold down shift so it's a straight line there's no chance of it going vertical if i go up here uh well it will go like 45 but it snaps into place and then we go all the way over to the end if you miss it by a few pixels it's not really gonna affect it uh, so much and now we say image uh, it's set scale let me see where it is oh here it is analyze set scale um, it has a distance in pixels of 252 uh, we want to it to be a known distance of five and we want uh, that to be in nanometers or microns. We can say global, and all that will do is next time we open a picture of the same scale, we won't have to set it again. So we can click OK. Uh, now we can say image. Uh, now we need to crop our image because it may uh, pick up some of these as particles. So we want to go rectangle, and we want to click that. Highlight that whole thing. Uh, now go back here, say image crop. And now we have cropped out all of that stuff. Now we can say image adjust threshold. And this is the most important part here. Um, here is our threshold. What we're gonna wanna do is scroll this one all the way over. So everything's black, 255. And then scroll this one. We want our particles to be black. Um, you, it might be as red starting out, but it's easier uh, for me to see it in black and white. Whichever one you want to do is fine. And we will have to do a little bit of processing here. So we could go here, and then all the particles will be their own entities, but the size has been reduced of the particles. So your most accurate way is to kind of include a good amount of particles. I'm thinking right there. It's kind of touch and go. You click apply, and now we can use these drawing tools here. You want to make sure that your eyedropper has been selected to the white, 
and then go to the paintbrush here and now we can just kind of draw little circles in here to make sure that these are all separated and we can leave one attached to kind of show you uh, what happens if, if you leave them attached basically it will count as one particle if we leave it attached so we're just going through here we're separating all of these particles to make sure they're their own entity I believe there's also a way to do this with just adjusting the circularity of them uh, but we're gonna do it this way for now it doesn't take that long and let's leave these two attached just so you can see it in a, in a minute and we, you can see the filters that we're gonna apply to these so that you can you can kinda of just automatically filter this out if you have a ton of data that you wanna process okay well that's good enough now we're gonna to go to analyze uh, we're gonna to go to set measurements now we're gonna select all the measurements that we want uh, right now I have it on area standard deviation uh, centroid uh, none of these the only ones I'm really interested in, honestly are area and ferrets diameter and uh, ferrets diameter we can see that right here it's basically just a way to uh, get the diameter of something that is not quite uh, a circle so it just kind of determines the diameter you can go through the math of it if you want it looks like this is the formula is equal to the perimeter of the object uh, p over pi so let's go back here we're gonna say file oh no 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 we're gonna say analyze and I think we're ready to analyze the particles now analyze particles um, yeah and here's where we set our uh, different uh, ratios so you could kind of measure one of these by hand here and it looks like that's about you know two or three microns in diameter you could do the math and figure out what the smallest one is that you want let's just say 0.5 to infinity if we made it zero to infinity it's going to pick up each of these dots and count that as its own circle so 0.5 is good I think we could even make that a little bigger 0.1 you'd have to do the math yourself calculate the area of the smallest one that you want in your scale and do that and go up to infinity now remember we could also put a limit on the maximum one as well because some of these blobs are not actually particles and right here uh, we can do bare outlines, ellipses, masks, count masks, overlay masks. Outlines are very good, and you'll see right away that now we can see each one is numbered. Um, it's counting this whole gigantic thing as one particle. So that is an issue. Uh, we don't want that. We can filter that out in post-processing, or we could change the circularity. Um, I've never changed the circularity before, so I'm kind of interested to see what that does. Let's not save that. Analyze. Uh, analyze particles. What if we say we want a circularity of uh, to 0 0.5? Uh, it doesn't look like much happened there. We have a few less. Well, maybe there's a way to filter out these, these large ones. It doesn't look like this large one has a number, so... Um, at least not that I see but let's look at our actual data here that's going to be in this Excel spreadsheet type of data we can go to our max uh, we can say file uh, edit results sort let's sort by area and now we have the smallest to largest area our largest area is 68 so it is counting this gigantic blob as one thing we could just delete that that's obviously an outlier um, 10 is is pretty big as well 10 9 9 9 but I believe there could be a particle of size 10 um, area that's not diameter that's area okay so let's go ahead and how do we export this we would just say file 
save as and we're gonna save it right in this folder um, this was s4 uh, 6 I believe so let's call it that s4 6 and now we have an Excel spreadsheet which we can operate on uh, let's go ahead and open that up okay so we could just delete this row right off the bat if we want to um, they're already sorted in that in the way that we want um, it is saved in this comma delimited format that's so we could export it to Python or uh, you know, in, in Python and, and, and organize this data in Python and, and post-process it much more efficiently. But we can get the average area, we can get the average diameter of the particle here. Um, like I said, this one's just gotta go, so let's go ahead and delete that right off the bat. And you should know how to use um, Excel pretty well. So the average diameter here is 2.5 if we go back to the picture two point five is about that big half of this bar here um, that seems like a pretty accurate representation of the particles I think that's a fair assessment Okay, so that pretty much sums it up. Thank you for watching. That's a very quick video on how to use ImageJ to process and analyze particles. Okay, thank you for watching.